Sure. So lasers really have a distinct advantage, specifically, at least in the short term, from a defensive perspective. Actually, when you think about offensive perspective, you think about uh, reach and power projection. And that's an apt name because it's power and beam concentration that are critical factors to making the laser offensive. When you think about an offensive weapon, you want it to actually go usually beyond, you know, whatever you're trying to protect, whatever assets you're trying to protect. So in the short term, from a defensive perspective, uh, there's a lot of uh, capabilities around counter rocket artillery and mortar attack. So thinking about uh, what the uh, Iron Dome has right now, you can think about kind of a laser dome what you would have a protection from uh, incoming rockets, incoming mortars, incoming artillery with lasers. Uh, and something like this has actually been demonstrated. Uh, Lockheed Martin demonstrated uh, shooting down eight small caliber rockets with a 10 kilowatt uh, laser. And uh, they're, they're looking to up that, uh, up that power level because the power level essentially equates to what you can shoot down. When you think about the power of the laser, it's about beam concentration, and it's about how much power you're putting into it. So the more watts that you put into the laser itself, the more you can shoot down and the more range you have. So when you think about the short term, it's more of that incoming fire. Moving down the timeline, you can talk about countering uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. So thinking about whether it's a, using an unmanned aerial, whether an enemy is using an unmanned aerial vehicle for surveillance or for attack with a more powerful laser, uh, you can shoot down uh, an unmanned aerial vehicle. And they've actually tested that back in 2014 off of a ship. So the fact that it's now being tested, people are seeing that this technology actually works. It's moving from the laboratory into the operational battlefield. And this is something that's important because it's going to essentially convince people that, yes, it's something worth investing in. And it's something that the military needs from a technology standpoint. Uh, as you move kind of further down, as you start increasing the power, you can talk about countering um, larger boats or larger swarm uh, uh, groups of boats that would attack a larger U.S. Navy vessel. And then down in the long term, uh, more of a uh, ballistic missile defense. So not just the smaller artillery and mortars that I was talking about at the beginning. I'm talking more of the anti-ship missiles and the cruise missiles and the ballistic missiles. Those would take a lot more power uh, in terms of the lasers themselves. And when you think about the power ratios, uh, I mentioned before 10 kilowatts uh, or tens of kilowatts to shoot down a small UAV at close range. As you start upping the power to 100 kilowatts, that's what you need to shoot down a UAV at a range of uh, multiple miles. When you start talking about the anti-ship missiles and the ballistic missiles during the boost phase, then you're talking 300 kilowatts up to a megawatt per shot. And that's a massive amount of power. So it's usually it's it's not the um, it's not something people focus on uh, initially, but power is a big constraint in terms of uh, lasers and what you can do with them uh, defensively. And this is really important because it doesn't only just allow for the defense of the of the ship or the aircraft, but it allows them to stay in the fight longer. From a ship's perspective, if they run out of ammunition, if they run out of counter battery, they have to move to a location and be refueled. If you essentially have a, a solid state laser that has an unlimited number of shots based on the power, then you could stay in the battle longer. So this is really a, a critical capability that the U.S. Navy is looking at. 